The horror genre has long tapped into the fears of the public consciousness. And Jordan Peele, the writer-director of Get Out and Us, is a filmmaker who excels at exposing and exploring those societal fears. I've been needing an excuse to talk about Us for a while. So when Matt Draper asked if I was interested in participating in One Horrifying Moment, a horror-focused video essay event bringing together dozens of talented YouTubers, I said, Yeah. Yes. Yes. Make sure you check out the full One Horrifying Moment playlist in the description below, but for now, let's get into the video. The initial premise of Us is simple. A family of four is terrorized by a group of evil lookalikes. But it's the layers to the horror, and how those layers are eventually peeled back, that make Us a standout in the horror genre. So follow me down into the tunnels as I examine what makes the home invasion scene in Us one horrifying moment. And of course, there will be spoilers ahead. We begin by descending into... There's a family in our driveway. There's not a family in our driveway. Huh. Who is that? Uh -uh. Oh, there's a family. There is something innately terrifying, and even universally terrifying, about intruders breaking into your home. Us's home invasion scene taps expertly into this fear, by alternating between moments of uncomfortable stillness and blistering danger, pitting our protagonists, Adelaide, Gabe, Zora, and Jason, against a shadowy group of invaders. These invaders seem entirely indifferent towards Gabe's attempts to reason with them, and then to intimidate them until they suddenly disperse and begin to work their way into the Wilsons' home. This sequence utilizes several long, handheld shots, which stick close to the characters' faces and highlight their fear, which quickly becomes palpable to the viewer. When Gabe is eventually overpowered at the front door and the first intruder steps into the house, the camera slowly rotates a full 360 degrees, giving us a clear idea that the Wilsons are being assaulted from all angles in what is obviously a planned and coordinated strike. The Wilsons are soon forced onto their couch and held captive by their tormentors, whose lack of communication and strange, almost inhuman behaviors hint at a motive far more disturbing than a standard breaking and entering. If the doppelgangers breaking into the Wilsons' home is viscerally terrifying, it's the strange moan of calm afterwards that heralds an entirely different type of horror. And it is here where we descend to... As this scene kicks off, uncomfortable, unanswerable questions begin to worm their way into your mind. Why is this family just standing there? Why aren't they reacting to Gabe's offers of help? Why aren't they reacting to Gabe's threats? Why do these people move and communicate like this? There is something unnatural, something inhuman, about their stillness and movement. In fact, nearly everything about these people is decidedly uncanny. They act like parodies of their lookalikes, exaggerating their worst traits in a way that is just similar enough to their normal versions to evoke them without ever fully becoming them. At this point in the story, we don't even know if the antagonists are human, but they are human enough, close enough to us, to feel deeply unsettling. This foray into the uncomfortable and the uncanny continues when Red, Adelaide's doppelganger, begins to speak. He's the ones. Red's voice isn't scary because it's intimidating or creepy, it's scary because it sounds like she's in pain. That the mere act of speaking, of existing, is agony to her. Academy Award winning actress Lupita Nyong'o, who plays both Adelaide and Red, imbues her character's harrowing life story here with so much pain and fervor that it becomes almost physically disturbing. But before we can descend any deeper into this character and into this film, we need to make a brief descent into... At the start of the film, a young Adelaide witnesses a homeless man carrying a sign that reads Jeremiah 1111. Throughout the story, we see the motif of 1111 pop up repeatedly. As Adelaide tucks Jason into bed, Jason notices that the clock reads 1111. 
the rabbits in the opening titles of the movie are arranged in cages of 11 by 11. I could go on and on here, but the example that I really want to highlight is when the tethered first arrive in the Wilson's driveway. It's this absurd, unnecessary attention to detail that has come to characterize Jordan Peele's feature films. So much so that even the music references this 1111 motif, with the four notes dun 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 dun. One, 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 one. But okay, what's the meaning supposed to be here? Let's circle back to Jeremiah 1111, the Bible verse referenced at the beginning of the film. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will bring evil upon them, which they shall not be able to escape. And though they shall cry unto me, I will not hearken unto them. My interpretation of this verse is that while you may cry out to be saved and delivered from the evil that haunts you, you won't be saved, and perhaps you don't deserve to be saved. In the context of the film, this quote makes perfect sense. Initially, it seems that Adelaide is the innocent victim, and that Red is the sadistic perpetrator. Yet the struggle between these characters is revealed to be far more complex as the story develops. So let's descend deeper into... If Jordan Peele's debut feature film, Get Out, was a movie about race, us is a movie about class. As Peel himself states, You know, the only thing consistent about the idea of us is when you have an us, you have a them. For Adelaide to live a happy and prosperous life on the surface, Red has to live a miserable and torturous life below the surface. The twist at the climax of the film, however, reveals that it was Adelaide who began her life underground, and swapped places with Red by strangling and dragging her into the tunnels below. We can see this journey between the underground and the surface as a journey of class. Of Adelaide ascending into the upper class by condemning her twin to the lower class. The Wilsons aren't rich to the point of being billionaires, of course, but they are wealthy enough to own a summer house. They represent, in many ways, the idyllic American family of four. Us, after all, is a distinctly American movie, or at least a movie that is distinctly about America. What are you people? We're Americans. Even the title, Us, is a double entendre, also spelling out U.S. United States. At the start of the film, Adelaide has attained that comfortable, picturesque life that is the ultimate goal of the fabled American dream. But Adelaide didn't dreamily meander her way into this ideal life. She had to fight for it, had to claw her way out from the tunnels, even if it meant consigning Red to the same doomed fate that Adelaide was born into. When Red and her family show up at the Wilsons' home, standing still in the formation of 1111, Red promises retribution promises to expose Adelaide's sins and cast judgment upon her. As frightening as the home invasion scene is on the surface level, the true horror of this sequence isn't that Red is coming to rob the Wilsons, kill them, or even torture them. It's that Red is coming to take Adelaide's livelihood, just as Adelaide once took Red's livelihood, and perhaps in some ways, Red is justified in doing so. It was Adelaide's own actions that set Red on the path of vengeance and set the events of the story into motion. Throughout the story, Adelaide can be just as ruthless, if not more so, than Red is, willing to stop at nothing to preserve the life that she has built on the backs of those beneath her. Maybe the monster that we believe stalks us in the dark wears our own face. Maybe the most horrific monster of all is... There is so much more to dig into with us, but this video is titled One Horrifying Moment, so I think I'll leave it at that for today. Thank you for watching, make sure to check out the terrifyingly great videos in the One Horrifying Moment playlist linked in the description, take care of yourselves, and I will see you guys soon. Thank mm -hmm. you.